in a kneeling posture, that's also absolutely fine. I want you to find something that feels like it's sustainable for a little while. So once you find that comfortable seat, make sure that you've got the space for your tailbone to kind of wag back behind you. So I like to lean forward a little bit, grab the sides of you know, the back of your uh, butt and just kind of pull them backwards so that you've got a little bit more of a forward tilt in your pelvis. Let your hands come to rest on the tops of the thighs. And then just move your chin slightly back and your ears up and back, if that makes sense. Just the idea of like this slight energetic movement back and up with your ears so that we start to line up the, line up the spinal cord a little bit more fully. And with your eyes closed, see if you can just kind of feel the moments when the body is in alignment and when it's not. That there's kind of this constant moving towards finding that stillness in that center. Take a big breath in and allow your breath to move down into a soft, round belly. So there's this ease through the, the space of your lower abdomen. And at the top of your inhale, take a moment to hold your breath, to pause with the breath in your lungs. And you can soften the neck and the shoulders, even the jaw while you're holding your breath. And then open the mouth and exhale, let it go all the way back out again and see if you can start to relinquish where you notice there's habitual tension in your body as you do that. We'll do that two more times. So you're gonna inhale, fill up. This time filling into the belly, but also see if you can get really expansive, creating a little bit of tautness through the area of your rib cage, holding your breath. Opening your mouth and exhaling. We're gonna do that one last time. Imagine that your breath is almost like a tool to scrub out the stuff that's no longer useful. So filling all the way up and then allow your mind's eye, your awareness to kind of drop into the landscape of your body so that you're really noticing where you feel tense or held. See if you can kind of direct your energy into those spaces. And then as you exhale, that you are releasing and relinquishing that all the way back. Down, 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 down. All right, so let's grab our right hand. You're gonna place your pointer finger and your thumb on the center of your palm, the two fingers that represent the ego. We're gonna get those out of the way. And then uh, your thumb is going to be controlling your right nostril. Your ring finger is going to be controlling your left nostril. So take a big breath in through both nostrils, and then with your thumb, press down your right nostril and exhale through your left. If you've got winter or summer allergies, you can also kind of use the other hand to pull open the nostril to give that air space a little bit more room. And then inhale through your left nostril. With your ring finger, close the left nostril as well and hold the breath. And then open your right nostril and exhale. Inhale through your right. Close the right nostril, hold. Exhale through your left nostril. Inhale through the left. Close and hold. Exhale right. See if you can really allow your mind to be steady. Inhale through the right. Hold the breath in the body, pause and release through the left. Inhale, left nostril. Close and hold. And exhale, right. We're gonna do one more round together, which is an inhale and an exhale on both sides. So inhaling through your right nostril. Close and hold. Open left nostril, exhale. Inhale, left. Close and hold. And exhale right. Release both hands down. Take a breath in through both of your nostrils. One more time, we're gonna find that breath retention. So holding now your chin down towards your chest. Find a lift in your pelvic floor so that you're 
controlling with your bandhas. And then exhale all the way back out again. Just take a moment to notice the effects of the breath work. It's a breath work that helps to balance the right and the left hemispheres of the body. You can let your eyes blink open and we're just gonna transition straight back into downward facing dog. So let's ride that balancing wave. You're gonna take those hips all the way up and back. Reach your heels down towards the floor. Let this first one be a little bit filled with movement. So reaching one heel down towards the floor and then lifting that heel and pressing the other heel down towards the floor like you were walking in place. Make sure that you're pressing down into all 10 of your fingertips, especially that pointer finger and thumb. You want to really root down through that. And then lift both heels at the same time. Bend your knees, lift your butt way up towards the sky so there's much more of that tilt forward in your pelvis and then exhale, press both heels all the way down to the floor. Ripple forward through your spine so that you're in a high plank pose with your shoulders stacking over top of your wrists. You might need to walk your feet back for that. Nice. Yeah, Deanna, you can even come a little bit more forward and then hug those elbows in tight. Yes, exactly, when we stack our bones, it makes it a little bit easier. Option to bring your knees all the way down to the floor. We're gonna transition onto our bellies. So elbows hugging in tight towards the sides of the ribs. You're gonna come all the way down to the mat. Lift your feet up and slide them towards the back of the mat. So we're just working to give that front leg a little bit more breathing room. And then press down into your hands to curl up into a low cobra pose. You might even work to challenge your core a little bit by lifting your hands off of the mat instead of pressing your hands down. Squeeze the elbows in tight towards the sides of the ribs and then lift your chest forward and up. Soften the neck and the shoulders. One more big breath in. And then exhale, release all the way back down to your forehead. Take your hips back to your heels. Let's find child's pose for a moment. So take your knees wide, let your belly rest in between your thighs and let your forehead come down to the floor. Take both of your hands on a walk over towards the right edge of your mat. So both hands come over towards the right and you're letting your forehead release down towards the floor here. And what we're looking for is to create a little bit of a stretch along the side of the body. So you want to feel a stretch along your left side body as you tiptoe your fingers over to the right. Take one more big breath in, breathing up the side of your waist. And then bring the hands back to center and we'll switch to side number two. So walking over towards the left. You might notice if one side feels a little bit stickier than the other. There's no right or wrong here. We're just looking to start to pay attention to the state of the union in our bodies. <laughs> Noticing if you're holding your breath and really allowing the breath to be a tool to help to create that release. So even directing your breath into the spaces that you feel the most challenged. And then bring your hands back to center, ripple forward through your spine so that you're coming into a tabletop pose. Bring those knees back underneath of your hips. Take the sides of the waist up and back. Let's go to downward facing dog again. And then walk your feet to your hands so you're at the top of the mat in a forward fold. You might grab opposite elbows here, so holding on in ragdoll pose. Or if this feels like a little bit too much, you might keep your hands on the floor for a little bit of added support. And then you'll sway a little bit gently side to side, right to left. Relaxing through the back of your neck. Maybe even start to imagine that the top of your head was filled with like uh, sand, something heavy. So you're really letting your head dangle off of your cervical spine. Really nice, ladies. Breathe into your lower belly here. So feel the expansion of your belly against your thighs. And then as you exhale, hollow your navel towards your spine and see if you can let the whole of your torso drag down towards the floor. And then release your hands to the mat and start to roll up your spine. One vertebra at a time coming all the way up to stand. Letting the head and the shoulders be the last things to stack. So finding that articulation. And then once you arrive all the way up, take a big breath in to sweep your arms out and up, bringing your palms to press above your head. Let's interlace all but the forefinger cross the thumbs here. Bring your legs to touch if they aren't already, and then move your arm bones back, hug your elbows in, reach up through the sides of your body, and then keep all of that side body length as you tilt over to the right, this big arch through your right 
side. Press your left hip away from you and then take your gaze underneath of your left armpit. So the armpit that's up towards the sky you're looking underneath of. Inhale to reach up and over. Exhale to deepen that sense of side bend. One more round of breath. Steady and easy with your breath. And then draw those arms all the way back up through center. If those elbows moved, reset yourself. Draw the arms back, the elbows in. Squeeze, reach. And then take the arms over to the left. Now notice that the weight is really far forward. See if you can equalize between the front and the back of the foot. And if, as you lean over to the left, it feels like your right heel lifts, press your right heel down. Lift the front of your hips towards the bottom of your ribs. So you're just closing off through that front body a little bit to create a little bit more support from your core. Breathing deep into that right side body for three. Maybe paying attention to if you can slow your respiration down a little bit for two. On one, inhale, arms come all the way back up to center. Hands will either come to the lower back for support in a back bend as a counter stretch or elbows bend into the shape of a cactus. And you're gonna curl those elbows forward as you lift your chest up, maybe taking your gaze up towards the sky. One more big breath in, find that squeeze in your legs. And then inhale, arms reach all the way up to frame your ears, exhale, fold all the way back down to the floor. Find your half lift, hands slide to your shin bones. You're finding that length from head to tail. So gaze is down towards the floor, but from the press into your legs, you're reaching from head to your sits bones. Release your hands all the way down to the floor and step back to your high plank pose. Again, option to bring the knees down to the floor as we transition. Elbows hug in tight as we lower. You're going all the way down to the mat. This time bring your hands behind you, interlace your fingers. If you can't quite interlace your fingers, just bring your hands as close together as you can get them, or if you have something nearby like a t-shirt or a strap, you can use that as well. But you're gonna interlace your hands and then reach your knuckles back to lift your chest up. See if you can lift your thumbs off of your lower back. And again, reach those knuckles back and lift your chest up. Keep pressing your feet and your pubic bone down into the floor. One more big breath and curl open through that upper back. And then exhale, release all the way back down to your forehead and press back to child's pose again. Hips come to heels. Again, those knees are going to be wide so that you have the ability to bring your elbows to the floor and bring your hands in between your shoulder blades. So the elbows tiptoe forward, your chest and your forehead release down, and your palms are going to stack one over top of each other in the center of your shoulder blades. So you should feel the stretch at the back of your arms. Yeah, so um, hands are actually resting in between your shoulder blades and your elbows are reaching forward. That's it, Amanda. Perfect. Nice. One more nice long inhale. Janae, it looks like you have a, a yoga practice, mate. <laughs> I love it. All right, walk those hands forward. Plant your palms back down to the floor and you're going to take those hips up and back. Find downward facing dog again. This time, reach your right leg sky high. Keep the hip facing down towards the floor, but activate that extension through your right foot towards the space behind you. Then curl your knee in towards your nose. Roll forward, take a giant step. Place that right foot all the way up in between your hands. And if it doesn't get there on its own, you can help it get there so that your knee stacks directly over top of your ankle. Bring your back knee all the way down to the floor, untuck those toes, and then bring your hands onto your front thigh. Scissor the back thigh forward. So I want you to imagine that you can pull your left thigh to your right thigh. Squeeze your right glute, and then think about pressing those hips forward again. Right big toe moves towards the front of the mat. So we've got the strong foundation in the legs, and then the arms will reach up. We're gonna find the clasp of opposite elbows here. So bring your right hand to your left elbow, left hand to your right elbow, and you've created a frame for yourself. Now imagine little strings attached to your elbows, lifting the elbows way up. Keep the traction of your legs towards center as you start to take your gaze up towards the sky, as you start to let your chest curl open. Take one more big breath in, and then exhale, release your hands all the way down to frame your front foot, and extend your right leg straight back behind you. Lift it to the height of your hip. 
So if you were to look down the line of your body, your right toes are facing the floor, and you're lifting from the back of your right thigh. There can be a tendency to let the ribs go. I want you to suck those bottom ribs in so you're really connected to those lower abdominal muscles. Lengthen your heel towards the space behind you, and then start to turn your right toes to face the side of the room. Right toes turn to the right. Curl your right knee up towards your right elbow, and then extend it straight back behind you, and turn your toes to face back down towards the floor. Same action again, we're just being really, really particular about it, that the action first is the turn of the toes to the side, that you start to feel that right hip open to the right, and then right knee curls up towards your right elbow and extends straight back behind you. One last time, turn the toes, curl that elbow in and up, maybe even see if you can lift it closer to your armpit so you really feel it in your core, and then extend that right leg straight back behind you. Bring your right knee all the way down to the floor. Take the sides of the waist up and back, come to downward facing dog. Inhale, take your left leg up towards the sky. This is not a cool puppy. Left leg goes up towards the sky. Remember that that left foot is staying parallel to the floor, that the toes are turning to face down as you press your right heel towards the mat. Curl the knee in towards your chest and roll your shoulders forward so that they're over your wrists. Take that giant step, place your left foot all the way up in between your hands, and let your back knee come down to the floor. Press down to rise up, so we feel that sense of reaching down into the mat with the foot and the shin, and then the hands come onto that front thigh. Squeeze the right thigh forward, like you could actually draw it to your left thigh. Squeeze your right glute. Press your left big toe forward as you move those hips forward. And then start to send those arms up, and you're going to find the opposite, opposite elbow clasp. So the one that maybe feels a little awkward, a little less habitual. Making those arms into the frame for your head. And then maybe starting to add a little bit of a back bend to it. So curling the chest up, looking nice, really nice, beautiful. Take one more big breath in. Imagine the sides of your body growing longer as your elbows reach up. And then exhale, release those hands all the way down to frame your front foot and take your left leg straight back behind you. So left leg is coming back and it's turning to face down towards the floor. Reach the heel towards the space behind you and reach your head forward. But notice if when you do that, those bottom ribs want to kind of drop down. Squeeze them up and in. I want you to feel your belly pretty strongly here. Then turn your left toes to face the side of the room, which is going to make you feel the outside of your booty work a little bit more. And then draw your left knee towards your left elbow. See if you can lift it up a little bit higher. And then extend that leg straight back. And turn the toes to face down towards the floor. Same action again, start with the turning of the toes, feel that first, and then hug the knee up towards your shoulder, and extend straight back behind. One last time, toes turn, elbow draws up towards shoulder, squeeze, lift a little bit higher, and then reach that leg straight back. Bring your knee all the way down to the floor and come to downward facing dog. Look forward to the top of your mat and take a walk, feet to hands. Coming up halfway, hands come to the shin bones when you arrive at the top of the mat. Exhale, release to your forward folds. Inhale to rise all the way up, arms sweep up. Maybe adding that back bend, hips forward and up. Legs squeeze together, elbows bend, curl the chest towards the sky. Inhale, reach those arms all the way back up again. And exhale, fold all the way back down to the floor. Find your half lift. Plant your palms, step back. Option to lower halfway down this time. So traditional chaturanga pose, elbows hugging in back, lower halfway down, I've got my dog to keep me from going too low. <laughs> and then inhale to upward dog, legs strong, hands traction back. Let the hips lift up and back, find down the facing dog. Inhale, take your right leg up towards the sky. This time bend your knee, open your hip towards the ceiling, keep your left heel reaching down. So there's an energetic tug of your right knee up towards the sky. Right foot stays pretty actively flexed. You might even spread your toes out, get that pinky toe a little breathing room. Maybe circle that right knee forward a few times. And then extend that right knee way up towards the sky. One more big breath in, draw your left hip crease back. So the only thing that's opening is the right hip. 
Now from the knee in towards your nose, extend that right foot all the way through and spin your back foot out. Let's rise to warrior one. So back foot is spinning out that 45 degree angle and the arms reach all the way up to frame your ears. Back leg should be straight and strong. So you're reaching your back heel down, you're firming up your back quadricep and then scissor that left inner thigh forward, squeeze your left glute. Arm bones move up. Maybe you're bringing your palms to press above your head. Cross your thumbs, move those elbows back and lift your fingertips up. Then see if you can bend a little bit more into that front thigh. Let's take a few steady breaths here. So feeling as you exhale a connection down into your feet, and without losing that connection as you breathe in, arise a reach up through your arm. Maybe even starting to challenge your balance by taking your gisti, your gaze, up towards your arms. As you exhale, bend your elbows into the shape of a cactus. So now you've got that bent elbow shape and you're going to curl the elbows forward and up to open up that upper back a little bit more. Don't lose the stability of your lower body so you're still deeply bending into that front knee, you're still anchored in your back foot and your belly is still strong. One more big breath and to curl open. And then right elbow comes underneath of your left elbow. Let's wind the arms up like ropes. So you're coming into your Garudasana arms. Right arm underneath of your left arm. Thumbs move away from your face, elbows move away from your chest, opening up through your shoulders, through the back of your neck. You're gonna come up onto the ball of your back foot, and then let's see if you can come all the way forward into Garudasana. And it might take a few steps, but you're working to bring your left knee over top of your right knee. And if you need to, you can use that left foot as a kickstand, or maybe you're tucking the toes. Scoop your tailbone a little bit so that you feel your lower belly more and then level your pelvis off. Left hip pulls back, right hip pulls forward. Bend into your standing leg a little bit more. Move your thumbs away from your face, elbows away from your chest again. Feel that opening in the shoulders just a little bit more. Last big breath in. Stay for the whole exhale. Let's unwind, draw that left knee into your chest, sweep your arms all the way up, take a giant step back, let's land back in warrior one. So a big, big, big step back. Yes, that was fantastic, you guys look amazing. Anchoring into that back heel as the arms extend up. Release your hands all the way down to frame your front foot. Option to bring your left knee down, or this time just extend that right leg back behind you, lift the foot to the height of the hip. Now turn your right toes to face the side of the mat without the rest of the pelvis going with and curl your right knee up towards your right elbow. So same thing we were doing with knee down. You can do it with the knee down again if you want. Extend the leg back and turn the toes to face down towards the floor. Same action again. Keep tightening those lower belly muscles, hips towards ribs. You're going to turn the right toes to the right side of the room. Draw that right knee towards your right armpit and extend it back. Turn the toes down. Last one. Turn the toes to the side. Hug the knee towards the armpit. Lift it up a little bit higher and then extend it straight back and bring that foot to the floor. Lift your hips up and back to downward dog. If you wanted to take a little vinyasa in between sides, which means you're moving through your chatter of the push up, your upward dog, and your downward dog, feel free to. Otherwise, we go to side number two. Left leg goes up and back. Left knee bends and opens towards the sky. Right hip crease pulls back, right heel reaches down. Lift that left elbow up higher so that you start to feel the outside of that left hip engage, your kind of glute med area. And then circle that left knee forward a few times. Keep the activity of your left foot as you do. Left knee extends way up towards the sky again. Then curl the knee in towards your nose, roll forward, take that giant step, place your left foot all the way up in between your hands, warrior one, side number two. So back foot anchors, arms extend up. Make the anchor of your back foot the first point of focus. So back foot is turned at that 45 degree angle and the heel stays on the floor. And then you're scissoring that right inner thigh forward to work the hips towards parallel, right boot is squeezed. Bend into your front knee. Bring your hands to cross, or rather your thumbs to cross, hands to touch. Elbows move back, fingertips reach up, curl open. Keep bending into that front knee. And then see if you can soften enough that there's room for your breath. 
Bend your elbows into the shape of a cactus. Curl the elbows forward, the chest up. Keep anchoring into that back foot as you lift. And then bring your left elbow underneath of your right elbow. Wind the arms up like ropes. Thumbs away from the face, elbows away from the chest. Feeling that opening. Keep leveling off your pelvis. We're going to come up onto the ball of the back foot. Remember, you might need a few steps to transition to Garudasana. Try to think about that steady gazing point not moving so that you're able to cross your right knee all the way over top of your left knee. Eagle. Remember, if you didn't land on it the first time, no worries about it. See if you can pull your right hip crease back, left hip forward. Scoop your tailbone slightly, bend into those knees. Again, thumbs away from the face, elbows away from the chest. Big opening in the shoulders. So longer holds today, doing the best that you can to just stay steady with it. If you lose your balance, no big deal, start again. Let's draw that right knee into the chest and unwind the arms. Arms sweep all the way up. Take your time. You're going to glide that right foot way, way, way back so that when you land in warrior one again, your knee doesn't come in front of your ankle. And then release your hands all the way down to frame your front foot. And you're going to take that left leg straight back behind you. Remember, you can bring your right knee down for this. Turn your left toes to face the left side of the mat. Curl the left knee in towards your left armpit. Squeeze and lift and then extend it back. Remember, you're looking forward, your chest is moving forward, and you're pressing up and out of your shoulder joints. Turn your left toes to the side. Curl left knee up towards left armpit, squeeze the heel towards your glute, and then extend the leg back and turn the toes down. Last one, turn the toes to the side. Bring it forward, squeeze, hold, one more big breath and lift a little higher, and then bring that leg straight back behind you. Hips roll back, downward facing dog. Roll forward through your spine, come to high plank pose. Exhale, lower halfway or all the way down, chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog or cobra pose. And then exhale, roll those hips back. Find downward facing dog. Look forward to the top of the mat. You'll step, walk, or hop the feet to the hands. Find your half lifts. And exhale, release to your forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way to stand. Sweep those arms up to frame your ears. Exhale, elbows bend into your cactus shape. Curl the heart forward and up, back bend. Inhale, arms up towards the sky. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's come to Utkatasana pose. So hips go low and back like you were sitting in an invisible chair. Squeeze those inner thighs together. In fact, there's an inner rotation like you were trying to turn the seams of your pants, the inner seams of your pants down towards the mat. Let your fingertips drop all the way down. See if you can actually graze the floor with maybe your middle finger. Stay that low as you send your arms up. Again, maybe palms come to cross if that's comfortable in your shoulders. Otherwise, you can keep those hands separate. Squeeze again, sink a little lower. Remember that the weight should be enough in your heels that if you look down, you're able to see all five of your toes. Side body gets a little bit longer, so from the hip to the reach of your fingers, stretch out. One more big breath in, and then exhale, fold all the way down to the floor. Find your half lifts. Hands to the mat, step or jump back, landing in your bottom of a push-up or lower into the bottom of a push-up. Upward facing dog or cobra pose. Roll those hips back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, reach your right leg up towards the sky. Bend your right knee, open your right hip. Option to stay put here, or maybe this time you take it all the way over to wild thing. Left toes flip to face the space behind you, and then you're turning your hips towards the sky. Right arm reaches up and over. So press down into your feet, lift your hips, and then wrap the shoulder blades together and arc open through your chest. Take your gaze towards your extended right hand. One more big breath in. And then as you exhale, release your right hand down and extend your right leg sky high. Step your right foot all the way through. Let's come to warrior one again. Back foot spins out. Arms reach all the way up. Exhale, elbows bend into the shape of a cactus. Anchor down into your feet. Curl those elbows forward. Lift your gaze. 
Right elbow underneath of your left elbow. Wind the arms up, find your Garudasana. This time you're gonna straighten your front leg and pivot so that you're facing the long edge of your mat. So both sets of toes are turning. And this time we're gonna turn them out towards 10 into a clock. So they're facing the corners of your mat. And your knees are gonna bend so that you're dropping your pelvis down low. So we've got those eagle arms and we're getting low in those hips. You can even move a little bit side to side to make it juicy. I want you to make sure that you feel it in your glutes instead of your knees. So if your knees are falling in, or if you're driving your pelvis forward, try to bring the weight back into your heels and press your knees in the same direction as your toes. We're gonna do a little breath work here. This is called lion's breath. So breathe in, lift your elbows up and off of your chest. Lion's breath, the tongue comes out, the eyes cross, make it look fierce. <sighs> Scare whoever's in the room with you. <laughs> Inhale, elbows lift. Exhale, cross those eyes, tongue comes out. <sighs> One more time. <sighs> nice. Set a little deeper into those sides. Find a little bit of movement right to left. Keep those arms bound. Nice, you're gonna unwind the arms. Keep the bend in your knees. Sweep those arms all the way up towards the sky. A little bit deeper into those thighs. Breath in through the sides of the body as your arms go up. Exhale, straighten your legs, turn your toes forward, and then lengthen the sides of your waist as you come halfway down. Try to keep reaching those arms towards the space in front of you. So we're in a wide-legged stance right now, which means that you're facing the long edge of your mat. That's it, perfect. Arms are reaching forward for now, pelvis is moving back, so you're challenging your core here, like you were holding a giant beach ball over your head. Move those elbows back to frame your ears, pelvis back, arms forward, belly in. One more big breath in. And then exhale, release the hands all the way down. If you want, you might walk your feet a little bit wider. Hands come back so fingers and toes create a straight line. Then bend your elbows back to draw the crown of the head down towards the floor. Weight should slightly come forward towards the front of the foot and then lift your hips, the sits bones way up towards the ceiling like your tailbone had a little light on it. You want to shine it on the sky. Yeah, looks great. Still more, you might continue to bend those elbows back, drawing the crown of the head down as your pelvis goes up. One more big breath in. And big breath out. All right, you're gonna to pivot to a lunge. So you're facing the right foot. So you're, um, you're coming forward, right foot is at the top of the mat, both arms are on the inside of that right leg, and your back knee is coming all the way down towards the floor. So you might keep your hands on the mat here, right knee drawing in towards your right shoulder. You might even duck your right shoulder underneath of your right thigh. So pressing the shoulder into the back of your knee to drive the pelvis forward, but stay anchored in that back kneecap. Little bit of that scissor action of the inner thighs towards one another. You should feel this mostly on the outside of your right leg and the outside of your right butt cheek. One more big breath in, press those hips forward, squeeze the outsides of your glutes. And then lift back up again, bring both hands to the inside of that foot. We're gonna to come to our high plank pose with that right leg lifted again. And I'm gonna give you an option to add. So watch this first and then we'll do it together. So we've been curling forward with knee in towards elbow. And instead of just staying upright, maybe now you're adding a push up. Lower down, press up and extend back. Just an option, okay? So right toes turn to the right side of the room. Curl the right knee towards your right armpit. Elbows bend back, chest goes forward, press up and press back. We're gonna do it two more times. So if you don't wanna do the push up, know that you can always skip. Right toes turn to the side, right knee draws towards right elbow. Elbows bend back, press up, press back. This is the last one, you've got this. Turn those right toes out. Knee towards armpit, elbows bend, press up, and then take it to downward facing dog. Take hips to heels, moment of rest in child's pose. Maybe coming up onto your fingertips so that the center of your palm is lifted as you release your forehead all the way down to the floor. Breathing in through the sides of your waist. 
Breathing in through the back of your neck. And softening as you exhale. Imagine letting the front half of your body get almost liquidy and kind of drape down towards the floor. Two more rounds of breath, slowing it down. Let's go to downward facing dog. So sides of the waist up and back. Left leg goes sky high. Bend the left knee, open the left hip towards the ceiling. And remember, you can stay put here or start to take it all the way up and over. So for wild thing pose, right toes turn to face the space behind you. Left foot comes all the way up and over. Janae, that was beautiful. And then wrapping those shoulder blades together, reach through your left arm. Nice, Amanda, gorgeous. One more big breath in. And then let's bring it all the way up and over again. So you're gonna come straight back to three-legged dog. That left leg goes sky high. All right, curl the left knee in towards your chest. Step the left foot all the way through. We come to warrior one again. So back foot spins out. <clears throat> and we're rising all the way to stance. Arms reach up, palms come to cross for that first breath. And then exhale, elbows bend into the shape of a cactus, curling the chest forward and up, forward and up, forward and up. Left elbow comes underneath of right elbow. Line the arms up, thumbs move away from your face, elbows away from your chest. Straighten your front leg and pivot. Turn the toes to face the corner edges of the mat and sink those hips low. Remember, knees are driving in the same direction as your toes, so it's like goddess warrior legs. If you need to, you can always widen your stance. Squeeze the back of your booty as you sink low and take it a little bit side to side. So you can add a little bit of ease, a little bit of flow to a shape where there's a lot of challenge. Nice, settle into the center. Inhale, elbows lift. We've got those lion's breath. Make it fierce. Tongue out, eyes cross. <sighs> Two more times. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> Keep low with those legs. Sweep those arms all the way up to frame your ears like you were holding a giant beach ball over your head. And from the reach of your arms, settling a little deeper into those thighs. Keep those knees driving in the same direction as your toes. One more big breath in, stay for the whole exhale. Inhale, legs straighten, turn your toes forward, side body length. I want you to keep those arms reaching above your head. This is gonna challenge your core. If you feel it in your lower back at all, a little bit of a scoop in the pelvis. So tailbone kind of curling underneath of you like a dog tail. Lift the front of your hips towards the base of your ribs. Move your hip bones back and your arms forward. One more big breath in with that reach. Exhale, hands come all the way down to the floor. So you can either keep your hands underneath of shoulders, or maybe this time you're reaching for the outer edges of your calves, ankles, or feet. Second variation of Prasarita Padatonasana, wide-legged forward fold. So elbows bend out to the sides, crown of the head releases down. We wanna try our best not to use the neck. So you're using those big muscles in your upper back, shoulder blades kind of pulling down and towards one another. Hips lifting up. Last big breath. Inhale to lift up halfway and we're gonna turn to a lunge. So you're gonna turn your left toes forward, right toes forward, and you're bringing both hands to the inside of that left leg. You might bring your palms down to the floor. You might bring your forearms all the way down. Try to keep that left knee hugging in towards the left shoulder. You might even duck the left shoulder underneath of your left thigh. Press those hips forward. Keep pulling your right hip crease forward. No need to rush it or force it. We'll be here for a little bit longer. So see if you can use your breath as a barometer. It kind of tells you when there's space to move a little bit deeper. You'll notice that the breath loosens. It's not as jagged, but the exhale can be a little longer. Last one. 
last round of breath. Bring both hands back to the inside of that front foot. Curl your back toes under and extend your left leg straight back to the height of your hip. So remember that you have the option of bringing the right knee down and that you have the option of skipping the push-up part of this. This is just an option you wanted to add on. So that left leg is the height of the hip, left toes turn to the left, left knee hugs towards left shoulder, chest goes forward, gaze forward, elbows bend in and back, press up and extend that leg straight back behind you. Again, so take it slow and control. Left knee towards left elbow, look forward, elbows in and back, press up and extend the leg back. Last one, knee towards armpit, elbows bend, press up, press back, downward facing dog, and then child's pose. So we have the effort, the challenge, and then it's over. Forehead down, maybe arms forward, maybe arms next to your sides. You're finding what's more comfortable in your practice. Three rounds of breath. Two more. Last big breath in and a big breath out. All right, let's come to downward facing dog. So we're gonna do just an option to play with. Um, it's, it's moving towards what's called Visvamitrasana. So we've done the work to kind of get us there today, but I would highly recommend just being aware that don't force your body into anything that it's not ready for. So I'm gonna demo once and then we'll do this together. I'm gonna come from downward facing dog and I'm gonna step my right foot forward. So I'm setting myself up in that lizard lunge variation. And if lizard is already a lot of a challenge for you, you're gonna stay put here with your hands, the inside of that foot, maybe you're bringing your forearms down. The next option, and I'll turn this way so you get a different view, I start by bringing my left foot kind of underneath of me like a kickstand, and I'm gonna duck my right shoulder underneath of my right thigh. Again, this is another place that maybe I'll stay put. Here's where it gets a little fancy and fun. One more angle, <laughs> we're going all angles here. That left leg is back behind me. My right shoulder is underneath of my right thigh. My left hand is gonna reach around and catch the outer edge of the opposite foot and I'm gonna lift that foot up to start. So this is the first thing. Then from here, I'm extending that leg into my hand, pressing my right shoulder into my right thigh and looking underneath of that opposite armpit. Okay, I'm gonna talk us through it. Again, don't force it. Stop where you feel good and challenged and know that this one, I know for me, it took me probably like three years for my body to be ready to do this one. It's great when, it, when your body's ready. When it's not ready, it feels not so great. <laughs> So we start placing right shoulder underneath the right thigh. Right hand might come to the pinky edge of the foot. And again, staying with lizard lunge, this is a big muscle group. So this is a great place to work for today if you know that your hips are still a little on the tight side. Still more, kick that left foot. So right now that left leg is straight back behind you. Kick your left foot over to the right edge of the mat. It's gonna give you a kickstand. You really need to make sure that right shoulder is all the way underneath of the right thigh. If you wanted to try for the next option, catch the outside of your right foot with your left hand. So it's coming around the top and catching the pinky edge of the foot. You're gonna lift that foot up. Again, this is a great spot to just practice, squeezing that leg onto the arm. Still more, leg kicks into the hand and you're straightening. Try to keep the hand that's on the mat straight as well. Yes, yes, really nice, Diana. Awesome. One more breath wherever you are. <laughs> and then let's bring that leg all the way down to the floor and we're gonna give ourselves a counter stretch of a half split. So right leg comes out in front of you and your leg is straight, toes are up towards the ceiling. And you're gonna pull your hip creases back and fold over that front leg. Releasing your forehead down towards your shin. And then you're kind of shimmying your belly button closer to your kneecap. So you're working to continuously create more length, more space along the sides of the body, which is gonna intensify the stretch. Let your neck and your shoulders relax. All 
All right, let's bring all four corners of that right foot to the floor. You can step straight back to downward dog. Sometimes people like a little palate cleanser from side to side, so you might come from high to low plank. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Okay, side number two. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, left foot to the pinky edge of your left hand. Back knee to the floor. Remember that just because one side could do something doesn't mean that both sides are going to and that you don't have to force it. So option one, left shoulder underneath of left thigh, left hand to the pinky edge of the foot. Still more, kick your right foot off to the side. So remember that you're giving yourself that little kick stance. <clears throat> Trying to find the best, <laughs> the best view. Still more, from here, coming up onto the ball of my left foot, I'm reaching with my right hand, catching the top of the foot and just spinning my chest to face the side of the room. I'm driving my pelvis forward, and then maybe, just maybe, kicking the foot into the hand, straightening the leg, looking underneath the armpit. Nice work, my friends. Yes, Janae, that's beautiful. All right, let's release, bring that foot all the way back down to the floor, extend the left leg straight out in front of you, toes up towards the sky. Tilt the pelvis up towards the ceiling, draw your belly button in and fold over that front leg. Remember that you're kind of working to shimmy your belly button and chest longer so Instead of it resting on the thigh, you might be bringing yourself closer to letting your chest rest on your kneecap, forehead moving towards your ankle. And then rise all the way back up again. Step your left leg back to meet your right leg. One more try for that vinyasa if you want it. Otherwise, coming to child's pose. From child's pose, no rush if you're still making your way there. Start to walk your hands back towards your legs to roll your spine up into a seated position and then sweep your legs out in front of you and bring the soles of the feet to the floor. And then very, very slowly, we're gonna lower all the way onto the back. So we're setting ourselves up for bridge pose. Feet are glued to the mat, you're rolling down your spine. And once you've come all the way down onto the floor, just walk your feet in a little bit closer so that your knee and your ankle are in a straight line. Bridge pose when you're ready. Press down into your feet without letting the pinky edge of your foot do all of the work. You wanna stay grounded through the big toe mound of your foot. And then once those hips have rolled up, roll your shoulders underneath of you and interlace your fingers. Reach your knuckles towards your heels. Let your gaze go right up towards the sky. Widen across your collarbones. So the space from one side of the collarbones to the other is nice and broad. And we're really active through the back of the body. You're arching up and off of the floor. Paying attention to slowing down and deepening your breath. Last big inhale, exhale, release your hands and bring it all the way back down to the mat. Let the back of your pelvis rest on the floor. Let your arms come to rest next to your sides. It can be really tempting to want to wiggle. See if you can resist that urge and just be still. Let your awareness really seep into your body in this moment of being still. We're gonna do one more back bend. So you can either take bridge pose or full wheel. Bridge pose, you're working the same way. If you're taking full wheel, hands are coming next to your ears, fingers facing down towards your shoulders. And you're gonna press down to lift up onto the top of the head first. And then once you've lifted onto the top of the head, straighten the arms and lift the head off of the floor. Amanda, that full wheel looks spectacular. I feel like you've been working on it. Those feet are perfectly parallel. I love it. Yeah, so Deanna, that looks great. If you can't quite lift all the way onto the top of your head or like lift your head off of the floor, then come back down into bridge pose after a few breaths of that challenge. Yeah, yes, nice. Two more breaths. 
And then exhale, chin to chest if you're in full wheel pose. Otherwise, the hips are just rolling all the way down. And our counter stretch is going to be happy baby pose. So you're gonna flex your feet as if you could press them on the ceiling. You're driving your knees down towards the sides of the mat. And you're gonna see if you can um, keep the backs of your shoulders and the back of your pelvis on the floor as you take that press of your knees. Maybe the legs are straightening into the hands. And then knees draw in towards your chest. Let your arms fall out to the sides of the body in the shape of a T or a cactus for your spinal twist. Legs are going to drop towards the right edge of the mat. Head is going to turn towards the left. And if you wanted to recenter your pelvis, I like to move my right hip to the middle of the mat. And then if that left shoulder lifts, press into the back of your head and center the shoulders over towards the right, the shoulder blades. Focus on your exhale. When we lengthen up the exhale in our twisting pose, it hollows out or empties the air in the body and it just gives us that little bit of extra ump to really wring things out, especially around the abdomen. So it helps to stimulate the digestive system. And the more you can soften, let your body soften down and into support with the earth. Inhale to draw the legs all the way back up to center and let them drop to the opposite side. So legs towards the left. You might even slide that hip underneath of you if you'd like. Recentering your upper back. So if your right shoulder is lifting off of the floor, it might seem counterintuitive, but if you press into the back of your head and kind of move your whole upper rib cage over to the left, it's gonna bring your right shoulder down. You're gonna feel the twist intensify too. and then bring the legs all the way back up to center and let your legs extend out to the right and the left edges of the mat for your final resting pose, your Shavasana. We didn't do any inversions today, so if you wanted, if you're somewhere in the room where you can take your legs up the wall, ending with an inversion can be really nice. It's just an option, but if not, you're welcome to remain where you are. We'll have just a, a short Shavasana, but it is such a, an important part of the practice because it's the time where we're finally still for long enough that the body can integrate new vocabularies of movement, new mindsets, let your body relax and your breath soften. Let the back of your body feel almost like it was porous. So most of us have a tendency to hold on to a tension where we feel like we have to like hold on to our eggshell, no one gets in. But while you're resting here, see if you can open up. Let the back boundary of your body almost kind of sift down into the earth.
let's start to come back. If you want longer Shavasana, you will never offend me if you decide to just chillax, stay on your back, and we'll see each other next time. Otherwise, if you are needing to get on with the rest of your day, just starting to find a little bit of movement, a nod of your head, circling of your wrists or ankles, maybe one final stretch. Eventually making your sway onto one of your sides. Making your way up into a seated position with your eyes closed. Place a hand on the belly, a hand on the chest. And just feeling your body being breathed. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Slide your hands together and lift your thumb knuckles up to the space between your brows and just very gently fold forward over your mat that your practice is an offering in the hopes that all beings may one day experience connection, safety, peace, and the ability to love and be loved. Nice work this morning, everybody. Fantastic job. If you have questions, I will unmute you all. Feel free to jump in. Otherwise, it was great seeing you. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye, Janae. Great job this morning. Thank you. You're so Thank welcome. You. It was great seeing you all. Bye. 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 Were you helping your mom with yoga this morning? Oh my gosh. I don't blame you. Hugs are the best. <laughs> what is it? Is that a game? It sounds like fun. Okay. <laughs> Bye, ladies. I'll see you later.